So the pre-show sucked ass, but thankfully this opening match with the Usos against the Wyatt family, two out of three falls, was actually cool. Um, this is when I started having issues where I missed a little bit of stuff here and there, but I was able to go back and rewatch some things. So um, actually, for the most part, everything that I had seen, it didn't change my opinion about the matches, so um, that doesn't make that much of a factor. But when I was watching this at the time... I thought that the beginning of it was a little bit slow, but man, by the time they got to the end of that, that was very entertaining. And uh, the Usos actually said the other day, or earlier today, or whatever, that they consider this one of their top three matches they've ever had. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I do think that by the time the second fall happened, they really picked up the pace and it became a very entertaining match to start off the night. So kudos to them. Very glad that the Usos retained the championship here. Because I think that the Wyatt family has gotten boring enough where if they would have won the tag titles, then those championships would have fallen down. So, uh, Usos are doing great. They're still getting a big pop from the crowd. Uh, Peyton had mentioned in the last segment that they did that little thing back and forth of who's the better looking one. They're getting more comfortable out there. They're starting to get uh, better on their mic skills and everything. Just doing an awesome job. So, I hope that the Usos keep this for quite a while. And uh, kudos to those guys. Uh, Drew, your thoughts on the tag title match? I thought it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Like you said, the first fall was kind of slow, and they really picked it up. Um, so, you know, I, I honestly, I think I have more faith in uh, Eric and Luke as a tag team than Bray Wyatt as a singles competitor. I really do. I mean, Eric, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That I'm saying, but seriously, Eric Rowan really caught me by surprise. I didn't think he was going to do much. I, I don't think much of him, but it was he did good. And, uh, you know, that super kick, though, because there was a lot of them in this match. So, yeah, this was a very good match. Way go. It was a very, very good match. The only issue I have is I've seen it so many times that I don't think I appreciate it as much as I should have. Um, I really wasn't paying too much attention up and right until the end when they mixed things up. They had the double super kick, the double splash. Um, and I can appreciate that. They're trying to go out there and make it different. So hats off to both teams. I don't think the right guys went over, but hey, what do I know? Miguel? I was surprised because, like I said, even, even though the Usos are on my... Uh, are on my fantasy team. I was convinced that they were finally going to drop the belts to the uh, to the Wyatt family, but you know what? They put on a great matchup, and if WWE thinks that the Usos are more marketable staying as champs, then more power to them, you know? I can't say that the Wyatts, for me, have cooled down. Uh, I think Luke Harper is still getting the fans going just for being a solid worker, but I, I do think that they are running into this, this weird situation where... By themselves, they, they're kind of just flat. They really do need the total package of the Wyatt family in order to really keep the steam going, in my opinion. Keep the steamboat going. Yep. And Peyton, you think that it was a good idea that the Usos kept the titles here or was it time to switch it over to the Wyatt family? I would have been fine with either decision. I am glad they went with the Usos, one, because it was a surprise for a lot of people. I think a lot of people just assumed it was a lock and it was time for to go over to the, to the Wyatt family. I actually agree with Drew. I think that there's a lot more potential to the Luke Harper, Eric Rowan tag team than there is to Bray Wyatt himself. Bray Wyatt's promos are just getting unbearable for me. What used to be one of the best parts of the show are now becoming an annoying joke. Uh, Luke Harper and Aaron Rowan, though, every time they go out there, they're impressing me more and more with their ring skills. Uh, Luke Harper, I've been singing his praises for a while now, but man, Eric Rowan, he, when he flew off the top rope in this match. It's like, holy crap, look at that big man fly. That was awesome. Oh. You want? It reminded me of Hornswoggle doing like his splash, but it's just a big person doing it. I thought it was really funny when it happened. Just, just the guy that's like six times the size of Hornswoggle doing it. You know what? When when Bray first came up with the Wyatt family, I honestly would have pegged him. More, sorry about. <coughs> excuse me. I would have pegged him more as a manager mouthpiece for the 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 other members of the Wyatt family, but. They seem to want to push him as a single star, and, you know, if he gets over with it, more power to him. But if they were to dial him back to that managerial kind of mouthpiece role for the Wyatt, for the other two members, I'd be fine with it because I, I'm one of the few people I'm – I still don't buy Bray Wyatt as a WWE champion. I just don't buy that look and that no. gimmick as champion yeah. material. 
but I could buy him as like the the mouthpiece for the uh, the for the uh, the two Wyatt brothers. You know, I could definitely see those guys getting over as tag champs with him as their mouthpiece. I would agree. I, I think he'd be fantastic as a manager and grow the Wyatt family at that point. Bring in a few more people, whether you're bringing people up from NXT or you incorporate some of the already current stars. Do whatever you got to do. I mean, hell, if we're getting a new nation of domination, let's just bring back the whole gang warfare thing. Yes. Let's just have a whole bunch you of know, stables facing each other. You know what I find amusing? And, and I don't I can't remember a guy in recent memory that people have had such a love hate relationship with. It seems that every time we're high on Bray Wyatt, the next month we just don't give a fuck about him anymore. Yeah. I think it was because of the fact that he that feud with Cena really did him no favors. We'll see what's uh, downside. But working with Cena will elevate you. What the yeah, downside is for this though is that's Bray Wyatt. I don't see any real advancements in the characters of Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. The ring work is definitely getting better, but I'm bored with them by now because all they're doing is walking to the ring and that is it. Well, the, for a while, they finally started letting um, Harper talk. Luke talk. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they need and to do Rowan, more of that. And Rowan would just mumble something under his mask. Wankers. And... <laughs> <laughs> Wankers. Yeah, but, they need uh, to do more of that. They need to give them more mic time and actually develop some kind of characters outside of Bray Wyatt. Because if they're just going to sit there and do nothing, then I'm not going to be able to get behind them when the Usos are trying to actually have more character instead of just being twins. So they do- And they don't need to give them too much character. I mean, they are what they are. Right. Big men that are about their actions. But that little bit of an element where... They say a couple of lines and then go kick their ass. It just adds that extra element of intimidation or weirdness. So I'm in total agreement. I have uh, one more point I want to throw out there. And that is the problem with the Usos retaining is who are they going to face next? Because I think they pretty much have run all they're going to do with the Wyatts. And I think this match was fantastic. The best match that these two teams have ever done together. But there's not much more you can do, especially when the Usos have beat them decisively so many times. It's, it's time for them to move on, and you really don't have any strong heel tag teams for them to go against. Uh, well, you, you you have the new nation, apparently. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, and then you have Rybaxel, which I guess you could always heat up enough to do a, a month feud with, but the, nothing meaningful, nothing that anybody's going to get behind. Maybe if you actually do this Stardust and Goldust thing and have two babyface teams face each other, maybe you can get something out of that. I know the, the matches would be fucking fantastic. And I'd, I'd give it a chance, but I just don't think that's the way they're going to go. But yet, that's the tag team that they're building up as the other big team in the division. So it's a lose-lose situation, though. I mean, it doesn't matter who won out of that. One of the teams were fucked. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, you could still have the Wyatt family follow Bray around, but as far as who they're going to feud with now, I don't know. Unless they put him against um, the Dust Bunnies. Yeah, I'm thinking honestly, what they need to do is they need to stall for a month because SummerSlam is not their priority. And if they aren't going to have an Usos match for SummerSlam and they're going to have a lot of singles matches or something like that, just have them face off against Ryback and Curtis Axel and Titus O'Neil and Heath Slater and maybe even Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel a little bit. And in the meantime, you build up that new stable with Kofi and then they can win the titles. I got some faith in those guys. What about you, Miguel? Uh, I, th- I think a, a, a feud with these guys, the, uh, the tag team guys that you could bounce these bad guys back and forth. I mean, they could honestly, the Usos have held on to the tag titles for so long. I wouldn't mind them hot potatoing it for a little while just to keep things interesting, at least until they get a team like the Ascension up, which I've heard here and there that they might be bringing up those guys to get the belts off of um, off the Usos, but I don't know yet. I mean, I've, I, they're getting over. I don't know if the Ascension's ready yet, but, I mean, if you got to stall, stall anywhere you can. I mean, those those belts have meant so little for so long. I don't care at this point if you, if you um, hot potato them. The Ascension, if they're not ready now, they're never going to be ready. Mm-hmm. Well, if they're going to if they're gonna yeah. hot potato it, then who's Rusev going to end up tagging, tagging with? Lana. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with that, dude. I'm still waiting for the day they put her into some uh, some uh, tights, just to see how she looks in the ring. But um, there's only one of a team which, which doesn't exist, but I think it's like a makeshift team that would be really good to bring up. 
Um, we know you got Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel, but I think out of all the wrestlers, Tyson Kidd could team up with and blend really well with his Prince David. Apparently they signed him, so I think that's a potential team that could work out really well. I don't know anything about that guy, but I'll take your word for it. So uh, goes right, cool. <laughs> we have a bunch of other matches to talk about tonight, so let's move on here. The next segment we're going to talk about is the Divas Championship match between AJ Lee and Paige. <laughs> 